So it looks like I need to do prologues sometimes. So I chewed some more. Um, this is a prologue preface to uh, the podcast regarding a quantum delayed uh, choice. Um, and what I gathered from it is um, is a quote that I posted from um, Mr. Tom Campbell recently. And essentially what um, he says is that the key ingredient regarding uh, wave function collapses, which I probably should have said in here, is not our consciousness nor measurement through, uh, nor measurement, though both are involved. It is the ability of information, I'm sorry, it is the availability of information. Information with, within the reality cannot contradict what is found in the reality. And so um, what I see is, is that my spirit, I perceive, is non-local, so to speak, right? And it has access to um, a place that is also non-local, a dimension, a higher dimension. And when entanglement occurs, um, it seems like, um, well, when entanglement occurs, that's when the measurement occurs. But that entanglement occurs because of information, which is the conscious decision, uh, not necessarily consciousness, but observation, which creates a measurement, which provides the information, the non-local dimension, the zero point field, it responds to that. And that response that is occurring um, can give the impression that you have gone back in time. But really it's responding, I think, because there's an aspect as many uh, podcasters, um, physicists, some physicists I've heard, scientists, um, that uh, consciousness is not being taken into account. And I would like to rephrase that a tad and even go along the lines to say spir uh, a spiritual aspect. Um, as I've said before so many times, I'm going to keep saying it. I keep reading more and more about quantum mechanics and I keep seeing what I've already read uh, in, in, uh, in Hebrew and Aramaic and uh, in Greek. It's really, really tripping me out. Um, so yeah, um, and then another thing, uh, Jim, I hope I'm saying his last name correctly, uh, Alcoholi, um, a, uh, speaker on quantum biology, he said, and I've quoted him as well, that, um, that depending on the spin of the electron, there's a biochemical reaction. So what does that mean? <clears throat> well, it's saying, I think it ties into what we're talking about, um, it ties into this podcast too, uh, which is, um, uh, this is going to be a long podcast. It's going to be a good one though. But what I'm getting at in this podcast is, is that the biology, um, it seems to be affected also by quantum spin. And, uh, I've talked about that in a previous podcast about quantum spin and the effects of it. So, um, yeah, I just want to touch a little bit more on the, um, aspects or what I've learned a little bit more about the uh, the late choice effect in quantum mechanics that Mr. Uh, John Wheeler um, talked about. Thanks. I hope you like the podcast. Hello, and I hope all is well. So, um, it seems like when I do podcasts, they kind of just tie to each other usually, but it might change up, but uh, still kind of building on the quantum entanglement uh, and the brain podcast. Um, so, um, I recently uh, revisited and am revisiting a um, um, mm, the, the double slit experiment that Archibald Wheeler, John Archibald Wheeler, um, discussed talking about. Um, I think the lensing effect and quasars, um, but essentially the act of observation can affect the past. Yes. And, and it can do this through quantum entanglement and spin. And as I've mentioned, um, 
Yeah, just look up uh, John, Arch John Archibald Wheeler and the delayed choice experiment uh, in quantum mechanics, um, and you can get more information. So, um, I'm of the opinion that the neocortex, among many other areas in the brain, are quantumly entangled um, to the um, uh, to various aspects in the zero point field uh, in respect to long term memory. And then memory in general, <clears throat> especially like when recall occurs and stuff like that. Um, there's a, a way a lot more to that. I am most definitely generalizing um, that part. Um, but as I always say, you know, I am a uh, believer in Christ and I source all of this stuff back to what I've read in Aramaic and Hebrew and Greek and and my studies and stuff like that and what i've read in there i i keep seeing as i about to share with you uh over again in quantum mechanic theories and this one in particular i hope you like um so <clears throat> over in i think colossians 3 it talks about uh in the greek um essentially that the original pattern is being recreated and a new pattern and that pattern is this being um that's called christ yeshua jesus christ and that that being uh, or that there was an attempt to i guess uh replenish actually is what it says the earth with um the first um, the first Adam, Christ is the first and the last Adam, but the first uh, uh, being, which was Adam and his wife, and uh, didn't work out so well. <clears throat> so back to what I was saying as far as um, the entanglement in the brain, I think that part of, imagine like a vector in in time, space time, okay? I think that those vectors are our DNA. And I've made a video podcast, I think, on that one, at least a video um, about the DNA, origin of DNA. <laughs> and um, my opinion, of course. And, um, and uh, anyways, um, I think this, that if observation affects the past um, via quantum entanglement and spin, because the spin changes... <sighs> that's been my experience when I have over in Ephesians one, it talks about the mystery of his will. And I, um, did a lot of, uh, you know, studying stuff like that and research and all that. And, um, I started seeing this thing, um, called a purge conscience. And this thing just grew and grew and grew dynamically. And the information or knowledge revelation, that was revealed for me personally what has been more than what i ever could ask for it when i would do acid i would or whatever drug i was doing i was wanting to attain a type of spirituality i wanted i wanted to have what i have now and um it didn't and it didn't happen maybe a glimpse here and there you know like a barely a taste but it wasn't substantial. I would forget. Um, and it just wasn't the best lifestyle for me. But um, long story short, you know, I did what I did as far as fasting and just kind of reading and researching more and uh, started seeing some things that that I've not heard in church so much, uh, at least in de the depth that I was seeing it. Okay, I'm saying this because <clears throat> when I would get this revelation, when I would get this, that's what I call it, unveiled knowledge, um, the, um, my spirit became alive, and I believe it became alive because it was, it was re um, that spin was changing. That spin and the entangled parts in my mind were entangled back to the capital S singularity in, in the creator who is to me behind the singularity. And then there's a singularity. Um, 
And so it's like I remembered because the revelation was like it was an ancient type of awareness of of information. Like it was so old, I could perceive that. But at the same time, it was it was um, perpetually new. I don't know if that makes sense, but it was just new and fresh and it's new every and it's, it hasn't stopped. It will not stop it. The universe is fractal because of the creator, in my opinion. And and what is shared is fractal and there's no end to it. So I believe that that last atom, uh, or I'm sorry, the first atom in the garden way back when, uh, which I believe actually is another creation. There was one before that, at least one before that, um, that there was separation with that entanglement with the singularity in the, in the particles in the brain. And so, and then the act of observation through revelation changes the spin <laughs> in the mind. And, but it's really a spiritual thing that trickles down from spiritual eventually to macro here in our world, so to speak. And then there's a transformation and you have healing, you have resurrection from the dead, um, you know, a lot of uh, miraculous type events. And so, um, and salvation, things changed, you know, and when a